All right. It sounds like we're live, my friend. So go ahead and send this over and we'll see if this. Yep, we are live. So we will. All right, watch stream. So I've got you live on that dashboard. And I have you live here. So I've got you live on that dashboard. Okay. Can you hear me on and your I end? Have you live here. 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 Can you hear me on your <laughs> the cat coming in. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Here we go. How you doing, brother? You good? Our chat's loaded up. So um, for a lot of people that are joining here, so we're using a new system. This is called lightstream.com. It is a browser streaming system here. So what we're doing is we're kind of testing it out. So bear with us for just a couple of seconds while we get this figured out. So first of all, I'm going to make a test. Um, I'm going to make a test chat here in the stream. Make sure everybody sees it. Uh, now, Stephen, over there, you can hear me. We're good to go? Yeah, we're good to go, my man. Excellent, excellent. So do you need that um, link over to the chat is that what you're looking for right now um i just need it so i can get it to the people asking for it so Perfect. they can find it on youtube um, i will I just it to facebook okay i will jump on it right now and get you that link i might echo for a second doing this so just bear with me here okay so we're live now i'm gonna go ahead and try to share this here Oh, crap. That's not what I wanted. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and type it here in the chat, and then I'm going to send it to you on Facebook as well. And then everybody who's out in the audience uh, that has just joined us, uh, again, my name is Jacob Billet, and I'm interviewing Stephen Hogue right now. Um, if there is hog, excuse me, <laughs> if there is any audio issues that you hear or any issues, please let me know. Um, this is a new software system that I'm using since OBS has been killing me. So definitely let us know. I just sent that message over to you. Um, well, my wife just jumped on. She said squeaker. So that sounds like we are. We are there. Thank you, baby. Thank you for jumping on board. So uh, we will give it just a, a couple of minutes for people to jump on board and we will begin. So, and that's the cool thing about streams though. I love that you get the interaction from the audience immediately, but the problem with live streaming is that sometimes some issues do happen and you've got to get everything set up and you've also got to uh hey Al so allison hook came in and said hey hello hey. allison hook hi, i allison. don't know who you are i think he does <laughs> hi allison <laughs> <laughs> so welcome we're getting ready to start we try to give it a couple minutes um to make sure that everybody is here before because i'm kind of like i'm kind of one of the guys that does his load first i'm not like a casual you know, I just, I, I hit it a hundred miles an hour and then I'm done in about three minutes. So also I'm probably sure, you know, the kind of guys that I'm talking about. So <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, Matt Hall. Yes. He, that, that, so there is a reason. So I was talking to Steve a little bit earlier and I was contemplating about wearing a tank top. And then I saw his Instagram pictures. Uh -huh. and went, yeah. So th that, that's not going to work. I'm not going to get embarrassed on my own stream. Right. So 
<laughs> Come on, man. Nah, the gains are righteous on this live stream. That is that, oh, I tell you what, this is the one ticket to Gainesville. <laughs> That's it. Go, man. <sighs> Awesome. So it sounds like, so Cheyenne, we promise you we will give you some gun show action, which is what I responded earlier in Facebook. And so, hey, Steve, it's awesome. You have such a great support. So um, we're about five minutes in, so we're going to go ahead and get this started. Um, so again, my name is Jacob Billet. I'm the CEO of Build Enterprises. So what I do is I, I focus on finance, investing, and creating wealth for people outside of the normal means, the nine to five grind, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been doing business consulting, financial consulting, and bringing people into my enterprise to create a better life for people. And so when I saw Steve, I actually saw you on a Facebook group on a finance post and it kind of attracted my attention. So Steve and I kind of discussed a little bit and finds out that this cat knows what he's talking about. So for the people that are here that are not familiar with you or what you do, please introduce yourself. Well, uh, I'm Steve. Uh, I'm an accountant and I am probably the least accountant accountant in the entire world. You know, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not exactly a button up, skinny necked, tame kind of guy. And um, really what I'm trying to do here on YouTube and in life in general, I'm always that guy. Um, I'm trying to start with financial literacy, you know, starting with the basics. Absolutely. The basics. I, I, dude, absolutely. Financial literacy right now, there's a reason why, I mean, I so I served in the military for a long time. We'll get back to that story here very, very soon. Um, when I, so I did three tours overseas. I was a sergeant in the military, getting ready to get my staff sergeant. When I came out of the military, I didn't know how to write a check. I literally did not know how to write a check. And so when you've got people getting out of school, not knowing how to do that, not knowing how to balance a checkbook, don't know what interest is, doesn't know what credit is. I mean, the system is built against people to make money. Is that, is that kind of what you see? Absolutely. And, you know, especially nowadays, you know, Hi, since Melinda. now since we live in this internet and phone lifestyle, especially with, you know, my generation and younger millennials and whatever that. And you're, you're 20, 27. I'm 27. Okay. Yes. So you're the generation under me. Yes. Yeah. But you know, my generation, the millennials and whatever the God forsaken generation is underneath mine, this new up and comer. I mean, it's just, there's, there's nothing. I mean, we have kids, they don't know anything. They're going to school, spending 60 grand for a liberal arts degree that there are no jobs for. And yeah. you know, it's, it's like my holy crusade is like, if I can help two people in the world, you know, to get out of this, learn something, then that's, that's what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's awesome. So for the people that are here now, we've actually got 11 viewers right now. So thank you for being here. So I actually told some people, I set you up for failure, Steve, I'm sorry. So yeah. I told some people that you and I actually met before. So I, when I was in the military, so I did some, some special operations that I wasn't really able to discuss for many people. But so I actually went by the code name of Dutch, right? And so I actually met Steve years ago. Uh, working on a special operations down in South America. And I think that you people should see, because not a lot of people actually have film of this, but we actually found a source that filmed when Steve and I first met. And I think that we should show that to people today. So we're going to go ahead and yeah. show people our, uh, our first meeting and see if they... <laughs> and see if they recognize us because life has been rather hard to us. So, right. To see if they um, they understand where where we came from. So, without further ado, so with with your financial background, so I kind of want to hear um, about kind of where you started and what led you into finance. Because talking to somebody at twenty seven years old that wants to get into finance that doesn't want to get into Call of Duty, first of all, or Fortnite doesn't want to be a pro Fortnite player is, is kind of a rare thing, but getting into finance, I mean, that, that, that's a big deal. So, so what, what made you want to get into this? Like what, 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 what's your background into this? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, my path is, it's pretty strange. You know, it's not like 
I graduate high school, I go to college, and it's this. You know, I, I didn't start college until I was 20, 22 years old. I went, I started working right out of school. I was a meat cutter, and, um, you know, I started, I watched The Wolf of Wall Street, and, you know, I was like, nice, I'm, really, nice. I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do and uh, see if I can get started in the stock market. And it worked, it worked well. So I was like, you know, how so can did I do you start? It? Did you start day trading? Is that yeah. where you started? I started more or less swing trading. You know, I started first um, Fitbit just released their IPO actually when I started. Really? And, um, okay. Yeah, I, that was my very first in. That was my very first in right after um, Fitbit's IPO. I bought in with a thousand dollars. I had. I bought. I sold out two days later when I was up. I think I made ninety one dollars, which is not much. Dude, but, hey, that's but, that's beating the market for sure. Because yeah, if you did yeah. that three hundred times a year. Right. I mean, you know, a 9% return and I was using E-Trade, so I was paying these huge commissions in and out, mm -hmm. but um, I was hooked and it took over my life for the next, the next year and a half. And um, I, I made, a, I made some decent money. I kept, I put in another thousand dollars every month and, you know, my background being in stocks and that was with, that was a really turbulent time back in 2014. You know, we had a day where the market, the Dow Jones dropped almost a thousand points before the trading lunch break. So I actually was able to, I decided I'm going back to school. I'm going to try to learn more about this. I want to be a stockbroker. I paid for my first two years of college with money I made from the stock market. And uh, it just kind of evolved from there. And then I, I, I was really, really, I was really into accounting and the ability to take this huge list of data and at the end, you tie, you balance, and that was like freaking bliss. Your for balance me. and ledgers, your credits <laughs> yeah. and debts. That was kind of your thing. So I, I went more so towards finance and my own personal learning, and sort of degree wise towards my um, towards accounting. And I got a job as an accountant for a manufacturing company, and um, I've been involved with tax work and things like that before. But and that was one of the posts that I saw about you is you were giving tax advice, right? which a lot of people don't understand the power of taxes. Yeah. You know, it, the basis for me starting this YouTube channel, a day I see on Facebook, people are arguing about if I work too much overtime, I'm going to be losing money because it's yes. going to put me to a higher yes. tax bracket. We actually yeah, you've heard that. that. Mm -hmm. You've heard that. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Why? That's not true. It's never been true. Why do so many people believe this? I'm like, oh, screw it. I'm doing a video on it. We're going to call it tax brackets explained, try to come up with some gimmick. And I think, you know, I had a series 90 second taxes, but all of my 90 mm -hmm. second tax videos were like five minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't click baby at all, right? Yeah, yeah, I missed the boat there. So as long as people didn't look at the time and just the title, I was good. But, um, you know, it worked. And actually that first crappy video, which was by far my worst, I shot it on an iPhone. It was shaky. The audio sucked. Everything was bad. That's been but my the content thing. was good because I stalked you. I stalked you like an ex-girlfriend before we did this. So, I, I mean, I was like, man, he was wearing that during that video. Man, that guy, blah, 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 right? He doesn't even match with his backdrop. No. Right? I, was do I was doing that stuff. But I tell you what, I mean, and this is something that we've got quite a few viewers right now. So, if anybody can take anything from this, f talking about money and finance sucks. It is not sexy. There is nothing glorified about it. But I tell you what, if you play it right, it will save you literally tens of thousands of dollars every year. Right. It, it is it is huge. And the, the laws that are out there, when you've got people like Steve that specialize in that, they can save you a lot of money and you work. If you guys work nine to five and work for yourselves, and if you're business owners, it's even more beneficial because a lot of people don't understand what they can write off. A lot of people don't understand what they can do, what they can put on, for example, uh, expedited depreciation or depreciation after five years. What would work best for them? They don't know that electronic equipment can be depreciated quicker than, say, long-term asset. You know, So there's a lot of things that can save you a lot of money. And if you're working your butt off for somebody else, you need to take advantage of that because you best believe that they're taking advantage of that on you.
Right. So you need to play the game. And if you don't know, and that's one thing I really like about you and, and you and I, besides our epic handshake years ago, you and I are just starting to create a beautiful bromance that I, uh, that I hope that really goes on further because we can play off each other's strength and weaknesses. And one of the big things when I was talking to you about some of the real estate um, investing that we do and, you know, flipping anywhere between 80 to $200,000 of property a year, which is what my company does is that, you can come in and go, hey, I don't fully understand this. Let me know. And you have that that humility to you, which is awesome because I can go, if I'm not a tax expert, I'm pretty good with taxes, but I'm not an expert in taxes. And so if I have somebody in my social circle that is good with it, that's who I want to talk to because I don't know everything. Right. Nobody knows everything. So if you find friends and people in your network that specialize in certain things, you need to take advantage of that because there's things that you can do with your knowledge that could change people's lives immediately. Absolutely. You that, know, that, that's huge. Yeah. And then that's the power of networking. And that's one of the biggest reasons that I want you to come on here. And so you, you kind of fell in love with the credit and debt. You try to, you kind of fell in love um, uh, with the finance aspect and the numbers aspect. And I, I and it's funny because I started as a day trader too. I love day trading. I did really mm -hmm. well. The problem with me is that I did what a lot of people say you shouldn't do. And I got emotionally invested. Yeah, I got emotionally invested in a company in Southern California that does alternative energy. It's a company called Capstone Turbine. Definitely take a look at them when you're done here. Um, this company not only is RS, they've reverse splitted. Uh, I was a 10 to one, crushed me. Okay. Um, I have nearly $157,000 in this company because there I'm a California native. I'm from California. Sorry. is I'm from Northern California. So we still have logic, you know, <laughs> compared to the other parts of California. Yeah. Um, but I, I believed in what they did and I believe on their product and it doesn't really matter how good a product is. If you don't have a good management behind it, it's going to go nowhere. And so right now I'm sitting at a, at a, at a staggering loss, probably about around 60% off of $150,000 and that's cash. That's yeah. not margin that that's cash. Right. You know? And so when I, and I thought it was a good buying opportunity and the management was going to get it out of it, like management should, um, instead they're taking bonuses and executive cuts for themselves. And that's that. And so that is definitely something that if you are in a day trading, getting emotionally invested into a stock because you believe they're going to do the right thing is the worst thing that you can do. Yeah. You know, and so I kind of made that error. Um, and again, I'll, I'll average down and get out of it eventually. Um, but so, so you end up doing that. So what really, what really brought you from YouTube or excuse me, from, from finance into YouTube? Was it, was it a channel of exposure? Did you feel like you can reach out and touch more people? Well, mostly, you know, they say, if you were going to start a business, you find a problem and then you fix it. And it started from the discussions because, you know, before, but while I was in college, I, I was a meat manager at a grocery store. I was a journeyman meat cutter. And, you know, those guys, you know, twice my age, I'm helping these guys, you know, the, you need to build credit. You need to repair credit. You know, I, I worked with the guy. That's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's something I was always personally involved with. I mean, you know, I've, I've never... I've never had anybody you know, reach out and give this to me. I've been buying my own cars, researching this, interest rates, and just something I always cared about because how huge it is. If you can control your own personal finances, your income is not the most important part of the whole thing. If you can manage the money you do have, that's so much bigger. You can make $250,000 a year and spend $253,000 a year, and you're getting nowhere. Work. See, and that, and that, and not to jump in, but when I, so I, I owned a finance company for a while. I'm actually going to be getting back into credit repair for my corporation, but there are guys, and it's funny. And if we have, we have 17 watchers right now. So if you guys are still here, thank you for being here and take these golden nuggets of information away. I have met guys that, I mean, in California, 250, you're barely making it. I've met guys that are 400. 450,000 a year and they're broke. Yeah. They are yeah. flat ass broke. Yeah. Making almost a half a million dollars a year. Right. And don't, so don't let, because if you're out there busting your butt, making 50 K a year, 
and your expenses of 30K a year, you are doing better than some guys that are making half a million. So do not ever, ever let that get you down. Yeah, where the income's really not it, but it's all these little things like you know, hit on taxes and taxes are boring. There's 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 no debating that they're boring. They suck. It tax, is what it is. Tax code's what twenty three thousand pages this year. No one on earth has ever read the entire thing, and, uh, <laughs> including the people that pass it. You know, if there's somebody in this chat right now that would like to see me do a video where I sit down and read the tax code, uh, if I get viewers, I will do that. I'm still my that. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, so if with taxes, you're talking about almost up to a third of your income that's just in limbo going to the government, you know, you just, you do your tax return, you go to, you go to a tax preparer in Walmart that you assume is an accountant, but they're not. And they just, they hit some things on the same software program you can do yourself at home and you either get, you, you either get a tax refund or you owe something, and that's about really the the extent of people's tax knowledge, and that that's not okay. No, you know, I did a video last week on two different tax benefits you could get for just going to college, and um, one of them was a twenty five hundred dollar credit, the American Opportunity Credit. Right, and and there were people out there said I graduated college, I never used that once. Well, you literally left ten thousand dollars on the table. Well, no. don't they have the continuing education tax credit? Well? Yeah, they, they do. That follows up from that. And I mean, but we're talking people, you know, I went to school for four years and I got the, uh, I got my degree and then that was it. And then it was over with. Or I paid off my student loans. I paid off my $38,000 and I never used the tax credit, never, never took that deduction on the interest. I mean, that's, you're talking 10 grand. Now, so for the people that are here that haven't taken advantage of that, because I know, and again, you are well more versed in tax knowledge than I am. I, I mean, my corporate tax knowledge is mediocre at best, and I try to do what I can on my corporate side. But now taxes, they're allowed to be looked at from a third party for three years or five years? Uh, three years. It's three three years. years. So if you have anybody here on the stream that has not taken a critical look at taxes for the past three years, I highly advise you to do so, especially you've been doing taxes yourself because there's a lot of benefits that a lot of people don't know about. And the government's not going to advertise it because it's money out of their pockets. No, right? absolutely. There's nothing there. So that is definitely something that if you are not knowledgeable, and again, Nobody likes talking about this stuff, but this is good to have interaction and conversation like this because it brings more awareness to more people, which is really what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And taxes, that's just that's just one part of it. It's something I try to cover as gently as possible because as soon as you start talking about taxes, most people, they tune out because it can absolutely. get so absolutely. congested. And that's, that's really the biggest challenge for me. I'm trying to, I say, I want to teach these lessons in plain English. And I want to make it not suck. So I need to make it a little bit entertaining, something. You know, I, Hank, he's my kid, and he, he jumps on screen sometimes. And well, you know, Hank has been the most requested person of this stream so far. He's, he's laying down behind the TV. I'm sure when he gets up and starts rampaging around, he will make an appearance. But, you know, it's whatever you can do. Try to connect with somebody because this is real-life important stuff here that – I mean, it could be the difference between you being financially sound and you're just leaving it on the table. Well, for, for example, and I'll just, matter of fact, my wife let me know about this today. So today, and again, you're the tax master, so you're going to see the benefit right off the bat. But today marks the two-year anniversary of signing on this property in Nebraska. Okay. So you know what that means. Okay. I, I'm exempt from capital gains. And so us playing the cards right again, but we took a year off and we screwed around and my wife decided to ride a mechanical bull instead of me and broke her back. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't get, I can't give her that kind of action. So whatever. So <laughs> she don't get her. <laughs> right on the Jacob train is completely safe and boring. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty docile compared to a mechanical bull. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyways, so she ended up busting her back and she had neck surgery. And so we took a good amount of time off 
And uh, that's right. Oh, she did. She got it too. She she <laughs> rolled that bull for she rolled that bull for about nine seconds, which is about three more seconds that I could ever give her. <laughs> 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 so she she did pretty damn good. So she yeah. she got a thirty percent increase of her time, right? Mm -hmm. So, but <laughs> but anyways, so she ended up having to get neck surgery, and uh, so it took us out for about well, I don't know four or five months, and uh, so we we just we've had a great time in Nebraska, but it's time to go. We're this house is going to be on the market tomorrow. And, and, but, but the, what I'm trying to get at is that, is that since we've been in the residence for two years due to federal tax code is that we're going to make about around 40, little, little under $40,000 on this home. Right. It maybe took four months of work. If that three and a half, four months of work. Um, but again, with the tax code, it's exempt from capital gains. Right. And so a lot of people, Stephen, and, 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 and included in this is that if you're wanting to get into real estate, I always suggest that you get into real estate and you do your first flip as a live-in home. Because when you do that, you can kind of learn what to do. And it's going to take you a lot longer than you thought. And since you're in the home and you're working on it every day, you can figure out if you like it or not. And then if you like it or not, you can continue on after you get this flip done. But if you stay in for two years, you don't pay any taxes on the gains. So we're not paying, and our tax bracket's approximately 30%. We right. incorporate into Wyoming, so we don't play – We uh, corporate-wise, we don't pay any kind of capital gains. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, with 30% on $40,000, I mean, you can really see what the advantage is not having that capital gains. Absolutely. That's huge. You're talking twelve grand. I mean, uh, just – twelve grand right there from some little – from a little time – and th that's corporate tax. I mean, personal tax, I mean, it's it's very similar, and it's just little things that people don't know. So really the challenge is finding that, translating it into English, and then trying to feed it to people to where they can understand. And, you know, so you can be the guy at work, though, on Monday, pounding your chest, explaining the tax brackets on your lunch break. That's yeah. that's really what, what I'm going for with that. No, that's excellent. So – so with you getting on YouTube, so, and this is another thing. So not only did your, your knowledge and, and your experience really show to me, which was great. Um, cause a lot of, uh, cause it, it's hard to find people in the business and money and tax and finance space. I kind of get my attention because most of them are trying to sell shit and it kind of is what it is. Yeah. Um, but, but reaching out and talking to you, not only are you absolutely kicking ass on the finance side of things at 27 years old, like let's not forget, like at 27 years old, I was just getting out of the military and figured out if I wanted to drink and ride my Harley or if I wanted to go into business for myself. Right. Like, so th this was kind of a big, I mean, at 27, you're already killing it. So you're doing a great job. Um, but then you decide to get on YouTube, and, he, and here's a crazy thing, right? So um, a lot of viewers that are here that know Stephen or know me, uh, you probably know Stephen better because, I mean, just, I mean, look at him. Like, I, I would follow him. I mean, you're not going to follow. I mean, I look like I fell from the ugly tree and every branch coming down, and then I stood up and somebody hit me with the ugly shovel, right? So, I mean, you're going to, this is a sexy guy. I'd follow him everywhere. I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, I mean, if I wasn't married, I mean, I probably would pursue this. Mm -hmm. um, so, so looking at the people that are here for him. So not only is he doing really well on the finance side of things, right? But you also came on YouTube and he came on YouTube just a couple months ago, right? So you're talking about a platform that is getting millions and millions of hours of upload time every month. I mean, you are talking that there are tens of millions of videos in every niche, especially in finance and making money and everything when it comes to selling product, especially making money online and marketing. And not only have you done really well outside of this platform, but then you come onto this platform and just in a couple of months, you're almost up to 900 subscribers. It's I mean, that is astro. If you guys don't know the saturation of YouTube, it takes typically a channel that in his niche, 
and, and, and his subject, subject of expertise, it takes guys years to get to the level that he's at. And he's done it in a couple of months, if that. I, actually, you're less than two months, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, got started, I uploaded my first video on July 2nd. July 2nd. It's incredible. Uh, so, so whatever, whatever cologne you're using, or whatever T-shirts that you're putting on before you do this, Extra let me know V-neck. because I will rock your sheer stuff. <laughs> extra medium V-necks are the secret. The the mediums or the extra yeah. mediums? Yeah, yeah, extra medium. Come extra on, mediums? Yeah, I am. I am two twenty five. So yeah, extra medium, and that that's the key there. You get yourself an extra me extra medium uh, V-neck. And you, you put, put a cat, cat on the thumbnail for your. Um, for you know what? That seems that seems to work because Hank, the, the cat, right? Is that, yeah. is that Hank? So Hank has been requested many times. So far. Yeah, yeah. Hank's Hank's more popular than I ever am. That's why that's why I get the screen time and he doesn't because I don't want to have to change a channel and make it for him. I'm way too way too selfish for that. So he, he I bring him out. He's when you punch through the glass and hit the big red button. That's when Hank comes out. <laughs> when you start seeing the viewers go down, you're like the Hank button. Yes. Yes. Excellent. So, so with that, so if there's any new YouTubers that are here, I mean, you've got quite a few followers that are here for you. I might have maybe two for me. So for any, any new YouTubers that are here that are really looking to get the kind of traction that you have, what do you recommend them doing? Well, um, I would say the first three things. First, you need to pick a topic, something you actually care about. You know, I see it all the time, with, especially in finance. You'll have somebody that all they'll do is they'll put on a button-up shirt and they will want to get on camera and talk about credit cards, which is great. But you know, anybody can get online and they can read something that's read something from a web page and call it a video. So expand on that a little bit. So guys will come on and talk about. So what are you talking about? Like like interest rates and. And like like cash benefits and well, stuff you know, like that, or a couple of different ways because you know you could have a, a credit card video that's more of a tutorial and a learning type video, or okay. you could see a lot where somebody is just you know, they're advertising the benefits of a card. But so many times in the fight in finance in this niche on on YouTube that there's no there's no personal connection there. Uh, the person like they're they're doing it because they saw maybe it was a trending card or something like that. Agreed. Agreed. It, well, it, but and again. There's also quite a few. Matter of fact, Bankrate came out to me uh, about an affiliate program for their cards. Right. So, I mean, and, and, I, and I think you nailed it here, right? So, I mean, let's just be very honest. Both of us are on here not only to help people, but we're here to supplement income as well. I am yeah. all about residual income. So, I know that if I get monetized and I put my videos out there, my videos can have advertisements on it. It's going to bring a little bit of income to compensate for the time that I put in to do these things. You know, but if you're coming out on YouTube, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you're the guru here. I'm the new guy. But when I come on here, I want to add a value and a benefit to the people that I'm talking to. I mean, of course, there's going to be, hey, if you want to support me, or if you're looking at more of this, or or if this service was good for you, click on this link and take a look. Yeah. But if you're here just to sell things, you're probably not going to make it. Right. Yeah, you know, and let me know if you agree with this. You're starting a business first, you find a problem that needs solving. Second, you find you identify the group of people that could be that could be helped. And then three, you work on accruing these customers or whatever. But anyways, where it comes from is you need value. You need to be generating value somewhere. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, this is something, and I'm very passionate on my Facebook. And again, uh, both of our Facebook link, matter of fact, Steve is up here and I am, whoop, wrong way, whoop, wrong way. I am that way, right? So on my Facebook, I am very big. It seems like a lot of people that I meet in life are always about what can I get out of this? What can this do for me? How can I benefit from this? They're consumers and yeah. they will always be consumers because they just want to get what's right for them. Well, if there is a, if there is an overabundance of consumers in society, that means that more people need to produce content that right. gives these consumers something to look at. And if everybody's looking out for themselves, like we need more people that are adding value 
that can bring information out there to be consumed. Yeah. It's a it's a benefit request or or a, a need versus demand or or whichever. And so and I fully I honestly fully 100% support what you said. Yeah. You know, there are more pe- there there is a there is a need for more people to add value to the world because it just seems like everybody's out for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, expanding on that as far as being a new YouTuber and creating value, you also you also have to stand out, you have to differentiate yourself yourself from everyone else because look, for most people, if you need finance advice, you can go find Dave Ramsey for a holistic approach or Graham Stephan, the other huge finance guy for Graham Stephan is huge on Facebook. Yeah. Absolutely you can, massive. You could find him for a more or modern YouTube. Approach. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, and for the two of them, I mean, you have everything you need. So, how can you separate yourself from these guys and from everybody else below and between? You have to make yourself stand out. And for me, that's it. Started with the tax brackets video when I started figuring it all out. If you look for tax bracket information on YouTube or even on Google with a blog post. You find a massive blanket of information. You know, there's no other video that's under 11 minutes long. And for most people, I'm not giving up 11 minutes of my life to learn about tax brackets. And true, it's true. I need small bite-sized pieces. And that's really, you know, my niche in the niche is I'm just trying to, boom, here it is. I hit it. There it is. It was in English. You understand. We're moving on. And that for me is where I'm trying to stand out there. And for anybody on YouTube, look at your competition. Look at what they're doing well and what they're saying that they're doing well. And then look at what they're doing well that they're not saying. You know, look at the little things like that. And that's where I found the importance of tagging and keyword. You watch every all these YouTube gurus in the entire world and they, they have all these lists of tips, but they're not talking about the little things like the importance of tagging and not only tag words, but in the description and the text on a thumbnail. Little stuff like that, and it all matters. So you just it, – it, it's really the micro the micro details. That's where the importance is. So make Now, do you use out. any tools on your end when it comes to YouTube? Um, I use vidIQ. I, I pay the $10 a month for the second level. I, I don't really chase the boost. Um, I get started right there with – with vid IQ, the ten dollar, I think it's the called Pro, and that gives me everything I need for ranking, uh, ranking tags, and that's big for becoming searchable. That's what the video I just did was on, and um, there are better software out there. I saw, I saw from your channel last night when you did your, or when you did your YouTube stream, the software mm-hmm. you use, it was all inclusive. So that's something I'm going to be looking into after this stream, actually. But um, yeah, so something where you need analytics further than what they can give you. Yeah, so I use TubeBuddy, you know, which is obviously the competing company. And so I would definitely be interested in talking with you and networking with you to see what software could potentially be better for people. Yeah. Because when I do, because um, I did my, my, my Feedback Friday, um, which is something totally new because with all these groups on Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, that I'm networked with, everybody seems to go, hey, uh, look at my channel. What do you think? Uh, give me feedback. What do you think? Right? Whatever. And some people do that just because they want views. It is what it is. I mean, whatever. But so what I do is that if there's any YouTubers here, um, I will actually take their channel, bring their channel in. I would live stream it like this, but I would live stream it in a browser. And so we can look at their entire channel. But the cool thing is, is that when I do a browser stream, it shows you what my TubeBuddy software is showing as well. Yeah. So it shows all the ranks on their tags, all their views, the, the whole nine yards. So it really shows a ton of data for people for free because they don't have the accounts. But I've got no problem with sharing what I see and helping people out. And that that got really, really, really good reception that first time. So I'm actually going to make it a regular thing to do on Fridays. I'm thinking Friday morning. Um, after the gym that I'll do that and we'll kind of see what the views are because I know like for me personally, I like looking at stuff during the evening time uh, because during the day I'm, I'm typically too busy, but a lot of people seem to have a lot of success during the mornings when they post their streams and their videos. Right. Matter of fact, Grant Cardone, um, Grant Cardone, what's the other guy? Um, I, I can't remember, um, but they post everything at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And that seems to be their best views. So 
I'm just going to kind of experiment with it and see where it goes from there. Yeah, absolutely. And for YouTube first, I think to make it, you have to, you have to realize it's more of the end of videos and the content you create. You also have to be a nerd and you have to be into that data and the amount of work that goes into it, especially at the point we're at where we aren't yet monetized. It's, it, well, it, I mean, it, shit, you got like three weeks and you're going to be monetized, dude. Like you're, you're a superstar. Like, I don't know what website you're going to and posting nudes for views <laughs> and subs, but I need to know where you're going. Hey, foot pictures are always for sale. Um, That's what it was. It wasn't called, uh, it wasn't called Instagram premium or whatever. Yeah, yeah my know? premium Snapchat. Premium Snapchat. There it is. Twenty nine ninety nine a month. Uh, <laughs> Jacob just subscribed, actually, so I know how. Oh, dude, hey, I'm, I'm all about learning. Like it's all a business right off for me for education. So there, there you go. There you go. No, that's awesome. So that's great feedback on uh, on new YouTubers. So so what is what is your vision moving forward? We got about 15 minutes left. So so what is your vision that you want to provide to people that are watching you now? that are supporting you like like what what are what are you wanting to do with with your project right now right now uh, right now i'm working on building a library of things that aren't going to change over time and um I, I more or less i'm trying to work on becoming a giving you some good reference material um that people will find for you know tax brackets or for um, credit card debt and working the debt snowball, which is big, but maybe saying it in a little bit of a different way than the Dave Ramsey who's mastered that. And uh, I'm trying to build a reference, a library from there. And I'm working over time, letting more of my real personality out in these videos mm -hmm. because, you know, I am, we've, we've been talking a lot. I'm a, I'm not a very tight necked kind of guy. You know, I, I cut loose. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm obnoxious. And I think the more I can put that into my videos or remaining you know, some semblance of professionalism, uh, that's what I'm working towards. But really my goal is I want people to, you know, Hey, check out Steve Hogue's video on inflation. This guy explained inflation in 10 minutes. And I understand actually a video on inflation coming later tonight, but nice. Better go see it. Inflation is a big because I mean I'm in rural Nebraska. I'm from California and I'm in rural Nebraska right now. And I will tell you what, change is a bad word for these people, right? Yeah. And investing, they don't do that. They right. put their money in savings and that's where it stays. Yes. Which on the financial side of things is the absolute worst thing that you could ever do. Yeah. Ever. And if, if you, and again, and people don't do things because of fear, they fear what they don't understand. And so if you can come in and get 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 subscribers or viewers that trust you, you can literally change the lives of countless people showing them, Hey, if somebody hasn't taught you financial literacy or the best way to do things, yeah. I need, I need to show you because you will have people that will put this money in savings and they're losing three to 4% a year based on the inflation rate at that time. Absolutely. For 20 years. Yeah. And that can cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. And especially right, right now, uh, the Fed just cut rates for the first time in eight years this week. Mm -hmm. And with all the talk right now, the Fed is going to cut rates again. But for the average person, you, you hear the Fed lowers, raises rates all the time. It doesn't mean anything. But to be able to take that, package it and say, hey, you know, what the Fed lowering rates means is your savings is going to go even more to crap. You were making 2% before, which is the best it's been in years. But now, good luck getting one and a quarter. So your cash only position that was already bad for you just got worse. Yeah, it is crazy. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I got into property. You know, when you've got the mortgage rates out that are three and a half percent, Yeah, you know, and if it's a live-in property, me being a veteran, it's a 0% down for a live-in. Right. So it literally caught, like this property right here was a VA loan. Okay. And since it was not made for a flip property, it was a primary residence. This property cost me $0 and 0 cents to get into. Perfect. So this was just a mortgage payment and then 
we're going to make the money when we sell out, you know? And so a lot of people out here have the adage of, if I can't pay for cash, I'm not going to buy it. Right. Good luck buying a three hundred thousand dollar home in a cash. Yeah, not a whole. Not normal home. people can't do that. Right. No, I'm sorry, I don't have three hundred thousand dollars sitting in cash, liquid assets, just at any given time. I wish I did, but you know, at this point in my life, I do not. If I had three hundred grand in cash to make these investments, I would do the it. The worst thing you could do is put that in property at three percent. Put that money into Ford and make seven percent dividend yearly. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. The news, I mean, the stock, as you said before, the stock market is run on play. It's based off emotion. It's either greed or fear. And, um, and you know what? And fear will create more millionaires, though. Yeah, absolutely. I will always buy in a tanked market. I, I bought property in 2009 when the California bubble was collapsing. I think California, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, all the kind of big, big areas, they were kind of imploding. I was buying property. Yeah. Because I knew for damn sure it wasn't going to stay. I mean, come on, man. Warren Buffett hit that on the head himself on the stock market aspect. He said, a bad day in the stock market where everybody gets terrified is a chance for you to buy what you want on sale. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, and that, that's it. You know, and it is crazy because, and again, earlier during the stream that I, I spoke about, you know, I did let my emotion get the best of me on one investment, and that's true. I did get emotionally invested, but the worst thing that you can do, and one of the big things, I'm a huge real estate investor advocate, and if anybody has any questions about this after the stream, please get a hold of me. I'm never too busy for everybody. I will always get back to everybody. It just, it's just how I operate. I mean, if I don't have personal connection with people, I am nobody. It's my job to do that. Um, real estate has always been one of the best things for me because, for example, I will have a lot and, and I would love your input on this because you're, you're a financial whiz. So I would love to, to bounce ideas off of you, but my philosophy and correct me if I'm wrong is that if there is a imploding market, so if there is a bubble bursting, right? If I buy a property for $300,000 and that is my value in that property, say the bubble implodes, that property is only worth $150,000 to me. That doesn't matter because that property becomes a rental property. Yeah. So that yeah. doesn't matter. I'm going to make $1,500 a month on that property regardless of what the property value is because I'm not selling it. Absolutely. That property is making me money. You know, do you never lose on a non-margin position or a, or a real estate investment or a non-margin position in the stock market? You will never lose money just by staying still. Sometimes the best move is doing nothing. And for me, when I was trading, that was the hardest thing to get used to because, you know, I referenced the day where the Dow Jones dropped a thousand points yeah. in, in the morning. You know, I was actually at my college orientation that day. And I see, I log on, I see, I just lost, I'm down 33%. So instead of freaking out and selling, well, I did, I did sell a, a portion of it in a company. I think you in us steel of all things to hold on to. I did not. And I lost money that day. And I learned. Wait, when did you sell your position in us steel? Uh, I don't even know the date. It was back 2012 or 2013. There were a couple rough weeks in the market and I was brand, brand, brand new. I had been, uh -huh. I was winning. I was winning on trades small. I mean, you know, I, I I had a couple trades where I would get in and out, and I would profit fifteen hundred dollars. That's not bad when you're only trading with ten grand. Then, well, check it out, and, and and for the people that are here, and again, we have sixteen viewers right now, which is great for a stream, especially right. for smaller guys like us. This is all because we've retained these people for fifty one minutes now, so we're we're doing a pretty good job. So stay with us. Um, if you are making more than 10%, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, um, a 10 to 12%, you're beating the market. Absolutely. And if you're beating the market, you are doing a damn good job. Yeah. And you're, also, good job. you're also not sleeping much, and you are putting in umpteen hours a day worrying about it. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you are on, on 10,000, you're making 1500. Yeah. You're beating the market. That's a damn good job. Yeah. If you can find an invest and, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong again. I mean, I'm just kind of going off figures off of my head right now, 
but I believe the formula is that if you can invest a hundred dollars a week, four hundred dollars a month into an investment that will pay you 10% or more per year. In 30 years, you will be a multimillionaire by math, period. Yeah. yeah. Right? That, that, that's the 401k investment strategy, right? Yep. Working so if you can make 10% off of that for $100 a week, if you can make over 10%, beat the market, in 30 years, you will be a multimillionaire and you won. You're done. Yeah. You're done. That's it. And that's, that's something that I really, that I, I, retirement is going to be a big focus of my channel. I haven't got there yet. I've only, I've only really, I've only been making videos now for a month. So uh, also here's a tip for any YouTubers that are in here. If you are starting a YouTube channel, take a notebook, write down ideas for a hundred different videos. If you can write down a hundred ideas for videos, you're ready to get started. If you're not, you need to pick a better topic. Now, my girlfriend and I sat there on the bed one night and we wrote down our 100 ideas. And now that 100 ideas is more like 370. And I have all these ideas and not time to do them to get to everything. But retirement is a huge thing that needs to be covered, especially my generation, younger. Social Security may or may not be there. It won't, bro. There's yeah. no way. The way that it is right now. I don't ever count on social security. I can't count on social security in my age. And I am shit. How old am I? Yeah. I'm 30. I, I don't know. My wife will know. I'm like 33 or 34. Yeah. I don't even remember <laughs> one, one or the other. I'm seven, what, seven years older than you roughly. Um, I can't count on it. And you, if you're going to go the entrepreneur route, you can't count on it. You're not going to pay into it. Yeah. Absolutely. You will. You won't have those good years. Shotgun, no one sits out. <laughs> Triple bull. Ashley's been trying to get me drunk, so I don't know what her what, what, what her approach is. I know her. She lives with me. She's all about helping people to make the worst possible life decision. She's all around bad all influence. All about bad life decisions. Yeah. I, I love you, there, babe. <laughs> so, um, so we have, for, according to my tablet right here, we have 15 active viewers. So, um, so typically toward the end of the live stream, and this was a great live stream, man. Thank you so much for coming on board. Hey, thanks for having me. No, I, man, I'm all about supporting guys that look better than me. So <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to live in your shadow, man. I'm, uh -huh. I'm just trying to get scraps, right? Um, but if there's anybody here in the audience that has any questions, um, and again, I know we covered a wide range of subjects here. But feel free to, I mean, if you want to ask what our arm workouts are, I mean, I don't care. I mean, they, you probably want to get Steve's workouts better than mine. Um, but if there's anything that you guys have, um, how do you get, uh, so sex, weights, protein shakes, simple math. That that That's how that works. And they just do a lot of girls. Huh? I didn't hear you. <laughs> how, do you how do you get arms like that? That's your routine. Mine's just all sex. I've actually never gone to a gym in my life. <laughs> Well, I can't get laid as much as you, so I just take what I can. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that's the that's the arm routine. But um, again, I mean, if you guys, anybody in the audience does have questions, I mean, feel free either during this stream, um, or or during um, or I mean afterwards. I mean, we have all of our social media contacts here. I will actually. Um, I'm not sure. Do you got? Do you have a um, a blog or a website for mailing lists or anything? Uh, right. Not yet. No, okay. I haven't out there yet. Okay. What I'm going to do here is that if anybody, I do offer free gifts when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, either motivation or finance or whatever. So um, I'm going to go ahead and throw my website link down. So if you um, if you go to the website and if you subscribe, um, I just put it in the chat right now. Whoop, that's the wrong address. Um, but if you um, go to that website, and I'm actually redesigning it with WordPress. Um, I've used WordPress for many of my clients, but my own personal website was was GoDaddy, which is crap. Um, I am, I'm going to be switching over to WordPress for better SEO and, um, and interaction. Uh, if you go to this website and if you subscribe, there's an email list 
Um, every week I give away free eBooks, free software, free stuff that can help people out. So um, definitely go there and um, build an enterprise. That should have been the right website. Let's take a look here. <clears throat> Um, for whatever, what the hell is going on here? Can I not type my own web, web page correctly here? <laughs> but anyways, um, it will open up a channel of connection for people that are here and, uh, we will do what we can to help people out. There it goes. Um, but again, yeah, so we have a couple minutes left, Steve. So, Again, if there's anything that you want to put out or any questions you want to answer here, um, see our clip. Yeah, uh, Shelly, I'm sorry. I think the next link is going to be a good link. Uh, please let me know. Now, the auto mailer might get screwed up because I'm transferring over to WordPress right now. Um, but I always try to put out whatever kind of info and, and free product that I can. And Steve, if you do have a mailing list or if you do create a mailing list, um, let me know if you have like an ebook that comes out um, or a course. And that's a that's a big one, right? So like Udemy and Fiverr um, and Upwork uh, mm -hmm. and Freelancer, they all have options to put courses together. Um, I'm actually contracting with, um, what the hell is it? Credit Cloud, I believe it is. I'll be contracting later this month for my corporate operations, which is a credit billing service. Um so if you have anything like that, let me know and I can throw it up in the blog and, and direct some traffic over to you, especially Perfect. from this. So if you ever do that, because I know a lot of the bigger guys on YouTube say, you know, put the blog together, put a website together, sales funnel, email funnel, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So if there's any products that you come up, let me know. I'll put you on my site. For I sure. appreciate that. Oh, uh, absolutely, man. Uh, there are plans for that, but it, right now everything's so new and everything's moving so fast. You know, I'm just one thing at a time, but yeah, definitely thinking um, where the products are going to be coming from. So I just, I, it's just, it's crazy, man, because I talk, I mean, and I talk to a lot of smaller YouTubers and I mean, you getting the exposure and the subscriptions at your size at, well, excuse me, um, for your length of time being active, I mean, you're getting ready to get monetized in just a couple of months. Like that doesn't happen. So whatever you're doing is really doing a great job. I'm yeah, very proud of that. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. And it's just, uh, just being myself and trying to give value to to YouTube. And it's been working. I have a lot of good support from friends and family, and that was you know that's your your first your first. Um, community there and it's just about scaling from there and you know every day it's what he here's a little side story that i just have to put in here you sure know, man I, throw it this, this is college, all about you you know that when i was in college my first two years i had a 4.0 gpa and that's why i was working 60 Nerd. hours yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, I had been and then i met this guy he was on on a on a facebook group that i was in and an accountant who had been doing it for years he's a cpa and I just contacted him. I was like, hey, you know, somebody, I'm, I think, 25 years old. I'll be done with college another year or two, um, another year. It's like, what advice would you have for me? I have a 4.0 GPA. I've been working my balls off. What can right. I do? And he says, he's like, well, that's good about your grades, but it's not about the grades you make. It's about the hands you shake. So get out and start meeting some people. And that's so true. Well, here we are today, you and I. And that's, that's so important. And for any new YouTuber, start talking to people, especially if somebody takes time out of your day to comment on a video, comment back, open yourself up. I, I Around the clock, I get messages on Facebook with different finance questions or, um, or a video idea. You have to engage. And one other note, I saw in chat, and I think you might have missed it. Um, Wes Simmons says, how does a pirate pay for sweet corn? And the answer was a buck in ear. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> I actually didn't see that. Good catch. Um, I will say, because this, this has been a pretty good stream. We've retained a pretty good audience the entire time, and we're just getting ready to wrap it up. We're just over the hour limit. Um, so this is one thing that, and hopefully this helps you or anybody that's here uh, moving forward. But when I was younger, uh, I 
there's a long history of what my life was, and I won't get into it this stream because uh, this isn't about me. But I met a, a man who was the father of one of my drug buddies back in the day. And he owned his little he owned his own law practice. He was doing very well for himself. And he told me something I will never forget to this day. And this is something that again resonates with what I do. And he goes, You will never ever be rich working your nine to five. Right. He goes, It's what you do outside that nine to five that yeah. you build your wealth. Yeah, absolutely. And that that honestly that mentality, I retired at 31. So I didn't have to work for another person for the rest of my life back in 2016. I was done. I sold some businesses I built, did really well, worth a good amount of money. And I travel and I vacation and I do what makes me happy. I, I love money. So I like to keep building and selling and doing things. But I don't have to work another day in my life if I never wanted to. And I'm done. Huge. But I, I, I want more, right? Like I just don't, because if I retire, I get lazy and I don't want to be lazy yet. Not until I'm older. Mm -hmm. And so his, his mentality and his wisdom that he passed to me when I was a kid led me to where I am now. And it doesn't mean I'm perfect. It doesn't mean that I know everything, but it means that if I can help and, and you're the same way, I know you are. If I can help other people reach that to not no longer be depressed or hopeless or don't understand money or doesn't know where the money goes and doesn't have two pennies to rub together and they're just miserable. I, I want to build people up from that. I want to take people out from that and go, Hey, there's a better way. Like, let me help you. Let me show you like, take a chance, you know, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about, for me, it's always, you know, for, the, for my channel, the, the banner at the top says hashtag Steve cares. And that has nothing to do with finance or money, but it's the point of everything behind it all. It's if you can make a little difference for somebody somewhere or for some area, that is what matters. Literally, you know, I've been saying for years before YouTube was even an idea that I literally, I want you to be the best you you can be. And if any of my friends are watching right now in, in the chat, if I have never said that to you, I, I have, I know I have. It's like, I want you to be the best you you can be. Steve cares and whatever you can do for somebody else. And a big part of my channel I didn't touch on in the stream is sure. about, about college and about how college is not necessary coming from a college graduate. Agreed, dude. Agreed. Right. Anybody here again, 17 subscribers right now. I spent, <laughs> I spent $120,000 on my master's degree. Yeah. I have a master's in business, finance, human resources. That's, that's my, and at that time I was working for the government. Yeah. So if I had a shiny piece of paper that said, I've got a master's degree, I was guaranteed six figures. That's how the state of California worked. I have never met so many idiots in my lifetime than people that had the same degree that I did. I mean, just absolute more. Hank, there he is. There he is. That's what you all been waiting for. There you go. There's Hi. Hank. <laughs> but, uh, I have never met so many incompetent people with that yeah. degree. And I, I am a huge advocate. I'm actually going to do a big video series on this, that if a, if a guy has got decent searching skills on YouTube can be more intelligent and well-versed and more successful than somebody who has spent $120,000 on a traditional degree on YouTube. <laughs> Absolutely. YouTube is the is the yeah. future of knowledge. Yes. And that's the difference right there. There's a difference between knowledge and education. Absolutely. And that is Absolutely. the most important thing. And that's my mindset over these past couple months has been look, I've built a whole my first 27 years, I became really good at working for somebody. I mean, I busted my ass. What no matter what the job was, I was a meat cutter. I did commercial refrigeration for a while. Oh, who is that? This is peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> I love this it. is my pea kitty right here. I love it. And she's not happy. She's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but 
the big thing it, with that was I, I saw the cat and I forgot what I was saying, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were saying so the education on YouTube or or and, and check this out. You want to see something cool? This is this is a rare view for viewers right here. That's my <laughs> baby right there, man. Well, check that out. Everybody here, Jacob and his wife Angela, they're expecting a baby in the next couple. Our of very years. first child. Congratulations it is. to them. It's either okay. me or the milk milkman, man. One of us, one of us got it done. So either the milkman or the mailman. Either way, congratulations! <laughs> congratulations. Thanks, brother. No, no. But uh, so you were saying, right? So the YouTube education, yeah. which again, like with YouTube and Udemy, and all these different, all these different education niches that are out there, you can go out there and get it and get an MBA education. For either free or a minute fraction of what we yeah. what I spent personally. Definitely. And right now I'm in a position too. I was in school up until last semester for my master's degree. Uh, I don't have a master's degree, but I I will I had my eyes set on a hey, my my mindset was set on that CPA for those letters after my name. And I was thinking, you know, there's something bigger for out there for me than being a CPA. So I decided to say screw school and yes to YouTube. And I never really even told anybody that, that I had even dropped out of college because everybody's, hopefully my boss doesn't see this, but anyways, um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going for the, the NBA because there's, there's so much more value for me learning about other things that I can teach other or that I can help other people with. Yeah. And, and you know what? And that's a, that's a great, that's a great thing. And I, I'm going to, ex I'm going to extend this live stream until whenever. So let me know when you're tired because there, there's too much knowledge for people to miss out. <laughs> I think this has turned into a great conversation. Um, so, but, but again, yes. So again, my, my, my education was a lot of money. And the reason why I spent so much money on my education is because I worked for the government and yeah. the, and, and this is, and I'm not going to get into politics at all, but the government will always value a diploma over experience. And I honestly think, and again, not to get political, I'm not going to get in a big political debate, but that is one of the biggest reasons why there's so much incompetence in the government. Absolutely. Yeah. That That is my, not only as being there as a first person witness of this, but outside as well like yeah. there's a lot of incompetence and they will take they will take a four-year college degree over somebody who has 25 years of experience in the same field absolutely and that is wrong on every level in my opinion in being someone who's just finished college recently and just dropped out from a master's program i can say and i did well in college i i graduated with a 3.985 Summa cum laude. Way better than me. I've got a master's and I had a three, I think I had a three, six, a little over so three, six. Brother, we did awfully good in college, but here's the thing. How much knowledge did you accrue in college compared to life? Like, yeah, I did well in school, but while you, while I was also in school, I was working full time. I was Agreed. reading lots of books yep. and I was living lots of life too. And that's, that's the big key. So uh, that's, that's going to, that is going to be a big focus on my channel moving forward about how you can, can and need to make it without college. Cause it's not the answer. The next bubble that this country is going to face is this student loan bubble. And oh, bro, trillions. 1.2 trillion, man, yeah. right now. And uh, that, well, then you've got, well, you've got the Democratic Party that's also wanting to eliminate student loan debt, you know, yeah. which is a big thing. And me personally, I have a considerable amount of student loan debt available. I mean, I, I don't agree with the program myself yeah. because, again, accounting-wise, there's credits and there's debts. So if a, if a debt gets erased, what's going to fill that credit? There's nothing there. That's all taxpayer money. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, even though it would help my position, I still don't think it's right. Um, now, for me, and it's crazy because – so you're probably so. If it's, is it safe to assume that you will not follow your master's? You will not get a master's degree. Is that is yeah? That where your stance yeah. is? Um, CPA is no longer the goal here. Um, still, it, I, I I like accounting. I like what I do, but I like what I'm doing now here on YouTube more. 
Mm -hmm. the, the, the impact is so much better. And even if the money is never the same, that's not what it's about. But I mean, they're not even getting into the money with scalability. We know, you know, as well as I do with YouTube, the sky's the limit as far as that goes. Agreed. But, Agreed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just think another $30,000 in debt for a job that I'm not in love with is not the answer for me. And I think that you're very wise. You know, like for me, I'm probably going to get my doctorate. And the reason why I'm thinking this, and, and I'm always open for criticism, but I want to come out with a book. That was That's one of my big pushes okay. is to come out for a book. And then once I hit, and I'm close, I'm pretty close to hit that millionaire, technical millionaire status. And so when I do that, when I release my book, I want to have a doctorate degree to kind of push the credibility of that book out and that's really all it is it's just credibility doesn't yeah. mean that i know everything but dr jacob billet sounds a hell of a lot better than <laughs> jacob billet mba yeah no I, yeah, I especially when there. i consult people too you know yeah no i see your point there and for me but also from my angle is i'm trying to connect with people on a personal and a, a lower level almost you know i don't come out and pretend to be a financial advisor because i'm not i'm not a licensed financial advisor i'm not a financial planner um i don't have i would consider you a financial expert absolutely well, I, I, absolutely i would but you know it's it's the difference between me and the certified financial planner is you know you build these programs for people you have that licensure and I'm just tell I'm helping them figure it out and do it themselves, which there's power in that, in that knowledge, just to do it yourself. And that's where I'm going for. So it's so far so good. No, I think that you're doing a great thing. I mean, not only can I say that you have a, you have an intense loyal following. I mean, cause you do, I mean, there's been a lot of people in here in chat um, that are all about you. So whatever you're doing, you're doing a great job. So don't let anybody take that away from you. I mean, I can expect you being monetized in the next 30 days. I, th I think you're going to skyrocket. And not just that, I'm going to promote the shit out of you because I like it. Hey, I appreciate I mean, it. I uh, dude, I, I, I do. I, I mean, this has been one of my better interviews. And I've interviewed, you know, fran franchise advisors, franchise guys, large podcasters. And it's funny because I've interviewed guys that are like, like the people to interview at my level. And they don't have near the support that you do. So whatever you're doing, you've built a connection to people at such a personal level that I think people will follow you into a volcano if you if you said that was the right move to make. <laughs> Not saying you're going to do that, but just saying that if you can build this kind of reputation with people, it shows a lot about your character. And your character is a very straightforward, whatever I say is in your best interest, believe me and i think people will follow you and i think that is something that money cannot buy nothing I, can buy that i think i, doing a I job. sincerely appreciate you saying that and that, that is exactly what i'm going for you know and what i do on youtube that's that's nothing like this this is not for what i'm doing here is nothing new you know this is ever family get togethers, coworkers, people on Facebook, stuff like that. It's I've, I've always wanted people to see this because I spent so much time learning about these things myself. This is so important. Take care of your own finances first. And the sky's the limit. And uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I can, I can show, I mean, right now I can go to my Facebook friends, you know, and then friends is very loose term, by the way. Yeah. Let's just say Facebook acquaintances. Mm -hmm. I can go on and I can show you probably what I have, maybe 3,000 connections. So I would say I could probably show you 2,000 connections out of that that are spending more money per month in rent than they would a mortgage for the same yeah. property. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, so yeah. so how do you get them out of that? Right. It's by, and most of those people, they don't think that they can get into a mortgage. And it's just self doubt. A lot of them can. They just don't understand how it works. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it just comes from a lack of financial literacy. And it's really, it, 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 it really, it comes from, it's not a priority in life. It's really not. I mean, how many, with an MBA, how many classes on personal finance for yourself did you have? You know, at any 
or pretty not, much. honestly, not very much. I mean, my master's degree was pretty intensive, and I would think that I probably focused more on corporate finance right. than I did personal finance. Yeah. And but in my opinion, that's that's where it all comes from. And but it's not even just the younger generations. I mean, your generation and up too, it comes from parents who don't understand. There are people. You know, I, there are people three times my age that can't get a loan to buy a house because they never had a credit card because they didn't want to deal with that. Now you have because no if I can't pay cash, I can't afford it, right? Yes, yes. Which stupidest, is stupidest, absolute stupidest analogy I have ever heard in my life, dude. That is that is so dumb. <laughs> I hear it so much yeah. out in the Midwest. It's unbelievable how much I hear that. Yeah. And that's a big one. And it just, it comes from the lack of the lack of that financial literacy. So, and, and, and that's what it is. And again, and I'm a very transparent guy. So I hope that people that have endured this hour and 18 minute stream so far, mm -hmm. if you're still here, I would love to drop um, uh, a, a, a nugget or actually it's going to be like a Hiroshima bomb of, of, of knowledge on you all right now businesses like myself and I, I own a corporation. So um, I have a lot of fingers and a lot of different things. Um, I don't want to put myself as a villain here, but think of the umbrella corporation with resident evil. <laughs> we have a lot of, of fingers and a lot of things. And one of my fingers is in real estate. Now, in the real estate market, I own several condos, Las Vegas, uh, New York, Florida, um, own some actual property, um, actual, you know, single household property in California, Arizona, Colorado. Um, landlords and real estate owners like myself, and I mean this in all respects, so I really hope I don't offend anybody. But this this is what the power of knowing your finance is really worth. So I can charge, for example, my California property. I am charging $1,600 a month for that property. A, a person can go out an equivalent property in an equivalent area can get a property like mine for about $1,000 a month they can get a property just like mine. So for them not taking charge of their finance and their credit and getting a property themselves, I am profiting $600 a month yeah. off of that illiteracy. Yeah. Now times that by the 15, 20 properties that I own, I am making a lot of money off of people that will never own a home. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the power. And the reason why I do that is because there's a market for it. Huge, right? A huge market for it. There's a yeah. huge market for it. I mean, there are renters that I have that can qualify for homes for themselves. Yeah. And I have reached out to these people because I'm working on my loan brokerage right now to actually lend on properties and go, listen, man, like if you did this and if you did that, I can get you into property for four or $500 less a month and you own it like it's yours. Yeah. And, and I'll hear either one of two things, either, well, I'm not going to let a bank own my property or, well, I pay X amount of interest per month because it's the beginning of the loan and it's all front loaded. So they don't want to pay in, even if it's 4% or three and a half percent or whatever, these people will not get into properties, real property, like real assets that add to their personal portfolio. Yeah. They will not do it because they pay interest or that a bank owns it. Yeah. And, and it's just, it, 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 it blows yeah. my freaking mind. And it's, it's, it's in a super profitable. Like landlords make a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. With it, that, it's just that's part of the whole problem, you know. We have, and plus, how many kids do we have that are going and spending mortgage sized money on a college education? In a college education, I'm sorry. In most cases, in, in any case, a college education is not an asset. It doesn't show up on any financial statement ever. You do not. We have we have CEOs that are making. 
seven, eight, nine figures that never went to college. And that's, agreed, agreed. And that's that's another big thing, and it's just another misconception. And it's something that it's just the general the general public. It needs to be made available to them. So, in really at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. So, it's all about hoping you know, hoping you get that following, hoping you can touch somebody, and it, it, it just it goes from there. Yeah, no, and I, I think that is. I'm sorry, I'm responding to a. A question for Michelle King right here. So, um, there's, uh, one, one second here. But I mean, and a lot of people. So, and what's nice about about what I did is that I not only worked for the government side of things for community service development and for the employment development department, but I've also worked on the private sector of things for you know home loan, home refinancing, home financing, uh, HUD, all that, all that BS, and so. There are, depending on what jurisdiction and depending on what state you're in, there's a lot of programs that will help people to get into their home. And and I and and it's funny because Dave Ram Dave Ramsey and I kind of differ on a few things. Like there's a lot of very wealthy people that believe what uh, rich dad, poor dad. I forgot what his name was. Yeah. Um, but he always said his house was never an asset. He was a big advocate of that. I'm a big advocate that my house is my asset. Yeah. Because I have to pay for where I live. If I moved in with my father right now, I would pay him rent. Like that, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. So if I go into real property and I own a property, not only am I paying a mortgage company for, you know, obviously I'm paying down my loan on the property, but that property is mine. That's leverageable. I can leverage that to move on to other things. Yeah. And I leverage the shit out of my properties. I always have, <laughs> you know, which if you have decent cash flow, you're fine. Now, if you're a fly by night and you don't have those cash flows coming in, it can be very dangerous. Um, but anyways, there is a ton of programs, especially for first-time home buyers. And Michelle, I'm talking to you if you're still here. There is a lot of programs for first-time home buyers that will help you get into a home. And it has to be a particular home. Like you have your HUD, right? Um, your housing assistance or whatever it is. Depending on your demographic, depending on your income, depending on, on who you are, you can get into a home for 3% or less down. Now, if there's any veterans here, and this is a program that I leveraged very heavily, is that if you're a veteran, you can get into a home with a veteran or a VA loan, a veteran-backed loan. So if you go into a home, they will require nothing down because if you default, the federal government will pay for your default. And so the bank will not lose any money. And so if you're a veteran, that's a really good position to be in. But there are a lot of programs that can help you get into real estate. The biggest thing is that if you're renting, you need to get into a home because it gives you an asset. It gives you something to expand on. Renting your entire life is you're literally paying guys like me. And the and here's the crazy thing. And again, just to expand, and I'm going to let you speak just a second, Steve. But just to expand on this is that if I have a rental property that is being rented by a tenant, any improvement I make on that property is a complete tax write-off, yeah. right? And the money that I'm bringing in on that property plus the improvements that I bring. So not only am I taking money from you, I'm using you as a write-off for any improvements I make on that property. And once the lease expires, I sell that property for a profit. Yeah. So I am making money on you three different times. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. You know what I think too, and what I've what I've noticed is when you bring in the words real estate, it seems like it scares some people away. And that would be, and that would be the real exact reason why this can happen. You know, real estate. When everybody's pushing on, if you want to get rich, you need to get involved in real estate. And there are ways other, but I'm still, tell me if you agree with this or not. Sure. If you want to become wealthy, real estate probably gives you the best shot in this day and age and the day and age probably for the last 60, 70 years. It, you know what? It really depends. It really depends. And let, let me, let me kind of show you, um, I'm going to do some simple math right now. 
but um so for example and it, it's it's kind of it's kind of particular to us because we're veterans so i can get into any property in the united states as long as it's a primary residence and i don't have a va loan out which angela used a va loan on this particular property in nebraska i already have a va loan out for a california property so i can't use it again mm -hmm. unless i refinance for a civilian um type of uh, of property loan but i can get into any property in the united states as long as it's livable as in i can move in it's turnkey and i can start renting it passes all code i can get into zero dollars a month or zero dollar down payment like nothing i pay nothing on it right and there's a couple of programs that are similar but i'm just going to use a va loan so i can get into a property and pay nothing so when I move into a property, say it's a flip property, but it's going to be my primary residence, meaning that I'm actually going to stay there. Mm -hmm. So I can move into that property with nothing down. I can spend maybe, I don't know, 10 grand fixing it up, 20 grand fixing it up and sell it for say a $50,000 profit. Well, that $50,000 profit that I made on that property like this, we'll just take this property for example. I'm going to make about around $40,000 on this property, right? I have put, and that's after all the money I've put into this. So I got in this property. I paid no money down. I paid a mortgage on a property that I stayed in, meaning that I'm, I'm paying for a place to stay in, which mm -hmm. all of us do. When I sell it, I'm going to make about around $40,000. And this took nothing out of pocket. Yeah. So to get into real estate, to actually start building an empire out again, say if you take an FHA loan or a HUD loan or whatever, just a standard civilian loan, say if you have 4%, so, right? So you come in, you pay, I don't know, two, three, four thousand or two or three, four percent on property sales. So say it's a hundred thousand. So you pay four grand, you get in. Say if you're able to fix that property up, you put $14,000 in it, you sell that property in six months for say, well, say you pay 15,000 into it, you sell for four months for $30,000 profit. You have doubled your money in four months, meaning that you're at a 150% return per year. That is a tremendous <laughs> return. Yeah. Tremendous. And a lot of people don't understand the power of real estate because if I was to go into stock, right, to make that kind of return, I have to spend... So, okay, say say if I go into a house for four thousand, right, which is the down payment, and I pay the mortgage and everything, I sell it in a year, and so I make three times the the, the four thousand dollar return. If I go into stock, that has to be pure capital paid in to be returned back. Yeah. So if I was to make three times return, that has to be cash put in to get out. On a property, you can leverage the actual asset value to take out. Does that does that make sense? So oh. you're so you're leveraging the cash value, and so for me to get the same return to get a to get a forty thousand dollar return on a stock investment, I would have to pay ten thousand dollars in and get a four to one ratio back on a stock, right? But on this property, I paid nothing to get $40,000 back. So it took nothing, no capital up front to make that return. Yeah. And that's why real estate is so valuable and why I tell people to do it as soon as they can. Because even if you flop, you still own something that you're making a mortgage payment on, but you still own something that's worth something with, without putting a substantial amount of money in and you were you were a day trader so you understand like to to, to profitably trade you know to day trade to share to trade stocks you need a bunch of cash up front to do this yeah so there's no way to invest in stocks with nothing up front i mean that's the name of the game and this is so important especially involved for veterans this is something i'm not sure I, i've seen some i've seen most of your videos have, have you done a video specifically targeting this I, I think I, I think I will. Um, yeah, I, I it's just the big thing is, is that with the VA loan is that the VA loan, you have to take it out on the intention to be a primary home. Mm -hmm. And so for me to tell people to take advantage of the VA system, 
on a home they know they're going to flip. Okay. It, it's, it's kind of an ethics thing. Uh, you know? no, I see. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. I was I, I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, I mean that's just that's that's a powerful, powerful thing there. Yeah, and so like Michelle was just asking, right? And this is cool, and why I love live stream is that we can kind of back off of each other. And so like Michelle, right? So in this stream, she's saying, so real estate investing is better than stock. It it can be. Yeah. And so this is a big thing. And, and Steve, are, are you good on time? Are you good to expand on this for a little bit? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. So, so Steve is going to be a great, um, a great backup on this. So, so there's a thing called liquidity. Okay. So liquidity in real estate is very low. Meaning that if I am to have a, for example, Michelle, like my, my Nebraska project right now, so for me to make money, to me to make this $40,000 on this property, this property has to sell and then go into contract and it has to close. So closing from contract signing to closing with the mortgage company is typically 30 days. That's the industry average, right? Now, that is a, a, a con to real estate investing. Now, like with Steven, if he was to put, say, $10,000 in a stock, let's use uh, uh, Alphabet, right? We'll just use Alphabet stock, yeah. for example. So Alphabet, which is Google, um, if he was to put $10,000 in the stock and make 40000 he can sell it today. Yeah. And he has that money today. Yeah. Now, there is what's called a settlement I know with E Trade, my settlement's three days. Mm -hmm. Stephen, I don't know what you're. Yeah, what you're before, you, before you can pull that money out, yeah. Three three days is that <laughs> is that okay? Three so, days, yep. So so basically, he can get his gains, and it'll be in his bank account in three days. For me, not only do I have to find a buyer, right, and the buyer has the credit and and the leverage to to, to buy the property. But then it successfully closes, meaning that it passes all the code inspections, the whole nine yards. The money's not into my into my wallet until sixty plus days. Where with Steven, he can make forty thousand dollars in a couple of days and be done with it. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't have anything else to worry about. So that that that's a really, really big difference between a liquid and a non liquid asset. It's all so, about games. I mean, did you, do you have anything to add on that or? Well, no, that's exactly, you know, and you can't really say one is better than another um, because they're, they're, they both have their place and you'll find a, a lot of real estate investors. They also and obviously have positions in the stock market. Absolutely. But also Diver you know, diversification. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and there's not much of a chance, if anything, of you getting that kind of return on a stock investment. I mean, you would have to be landing on something at the exact right time on your in and your out to make that kind of astronomical return. But with real estate, you know, to make that money in bunches like that, it's 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 more it's much more possible. But there's also a lot more work involved. So Absolutely. I really Absolutely. don't. Yeah, I really don't think you could say one is better than another. Um, there are definitely people that have been made and broken by both of them as far as investments. Do you agree with that? I do. I do. You know, the nice thing about real estate though, is that real estate is a, is a, what's called a finite as asset. Meaning that if I buy this Nebraska property or Texas or California or Arizona or Florida, all these different markets that we're involved in, if I buy that, there will never be another one of those in stocks that there will never be a address 140 North Macomb or whatever. Like I own that piece of the earth for the rest of the, the rest of the universe life because I will it down to my corporation, so on and so forth. So with stock, there is, and not saying old companies do this. However, my Southern California company that I'm investing to my balls with has done this multiple times. But stocks have what's called an option to reverse split, meaning that if you are in the stock 
and the stock is underperforming the market, so on and so forth, they can actually trade your shares for more shares or less shares to bring their market up to a minimum price to be listed on the stock market. So when you own a stock, it's not an infinite resource. They can do and manipulate the stock however they want yeah. to keep themselves listed or in good standing with NASDAQ or whatever. When real estate, when you own a property, nobody else can own that property. It can never be partitioned. The only thing that can happen to a pro property is federal supremacy. So where if they want to put like a railroad through there or put a government building or whatever, but if they want to do that, they're going to pay you fair market price to get out of it. So you have an option to get out of it and stocks. They're not going to pay you fair market price worth of shit. They're just going to do what they feel they need to do. And not a lot of companies do that. That's a very rare instance in stock. But the best thing is, is to invest in both platforms Meaning that, and I was actually talking to Stephen about this earlier today. So if you want to get into real estate investing, what I always recommend people doing is investing in companies that do that and get kind of the taste of that and then move forward yeah. instead of, because people could put, we put $110,000 in this place. A lot of people can't do that. So if you can't do that, that's fine. Don't miss the boat. Don't miss the opportunity. Just go into contract for a smaller amount. And then when the property sells, make your returns and this invest bigger and bigger into the properties because not everybody can buy a house because we bought this house for $78,000. That was our, that was our market value was $78,000. We put in cash nearly $45,000 in cash into this property to make this happen on top of a couple of other expenses. So I can't tell you that if you want to get into real estate investing, that you have not only the credit to, to carry a mortgage at that amount, but then have the cash to pay the subcontractors, materials, the whole nine yards to get this going. A lot of people don't have that kind of money. And so they get discouraged. And so find companies and my company does this, and there's other. There's what's called REITs, which Stephen, I'm sure you know, yeah. real estate investment trusts, um, that do the same thing that we do, only at a bigger level. And so, if you want to start experimenting with it and get involved, that would always be the best option instead of putting all your money and eggs in that one basket because it could blow up on you, and then you got to think, well, shit. I put all this money in, what am I going to do? Because for us, if the market, for whatever reason, imploded, we would make it a rental. It would bring in income to our company, and we would still pay our shareholders regardless. Yeah. We will always pay our investors regardless. It doesn't matter. We will just switch from a sale to an investment property, and then we leverage our other income-producing assets to pay our shareholders. That, that's how we do our business. Yeah, and that that's the difference there. Really, it's you're talking about two two almost different industries there. And um, but I think with 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 the stock market, instead of looking at it as just trading, um, take the stock market for what it should be for most people, especially with whatever's going to change here in the coming in this coming election cycle, especially with what they're talking about with these proposed ideas for student loans. And most of the it's gonna be rough. Yeah, if they if they forgive student loan, and again, I'm a student loan borrower, yeah. so I mean, it would be in my best interest to do so, even though I would rather pay it back yeah. because I understand the consequences of that because that's a lot of money. And I mean, what is a student loan debt at now? Like six and a half trillion? I don't yeah, even remember it, what it it's, was. It's massive, but. And you know, Bernie Sanders came out and said, we'll pay for it with a tax on the stock market. So, you know, day trading is going to become extinct if you impose a tax like that. What on kind the of taxes are they wanting to put on stock market trades? I didn't even hear about that. Bernie Sanders proposed in, in a, 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 a one or a, a half of a percent tax on the in and the out of every exchange. So that's, and that's on top of your broker fees. Well, yeah. So, but you're talking another 1%, but most day traders, they're trading for less than 1%. That's how they're making their money. They're doing it in volume and they're trading those little swings. So trading yeah. is one, but investing is always going to be there. And in the buy and hold, that's what I believe in now because the emotional struggle of being a trader in the, in the stock market, market, it's you have to be, you have to be ready for it. And that's huge. 
So um, I, I, I really don't recommend, if, if, as, as far, far as, as, far as, as if, from, from my, my point, point of view, view I, don't I don't recommend someone without the mindset of what it's going to take to be a stock trader get involved with it because it can ruin your life. I was losing sleep. I didn't think about anything that wasn't the market. Oh, and, I hear you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. So, so for your your advice, so you're more of a so you're more of a holder now. Is that is yeah. is that your philosophy now? That's that's the philosophy I've moved towards. And just you know, and plus over like we talked about earlier, to be you need to beat the market. And that, that is, is that, that sounds, sounds so much easier than, than what it is, but over, and over time, nobody beats the market as a trader for consistently forever. You know, I I'm sure they're out there, but I can't name a day trader that's beaten the market every day for over a course of years. Um, the, the key, key is, is you just have to win bigger, bigger than, than when you lose, but because you're going, going to lose, lose. And, and to win bigger than you lose all the time, that's hard. And um, it's yeah, not that's happen. one of the big reasons, right? So I, I'm a big private, uh, privately traded investor. So there's a lot of, uh, like for me, for example, my company's privately traded. So I, I'm a C corporation. I issue stock. I pay dividends, the whole nine yards. And so for my company, my company is a growth of dividend type company. So if somebody comes in with an investment, I pay them a 1.25% um, yield every quarter. 5% yield a year guaranteed and they stay with me and they grow as my company grows. Um, so when it comes to beating the market, no, that, that, that on paper doesn't beat the market. It's only a 5% return, but it's also a, also a growth position. I mean, I'm authorized to issue a million shares. And at this time I've issued about 115,000 shares. So there is a, and my company's worth vastly more than that much money. And so my my new investors are sitting sitting pretty. Mm -hmm. The problem with privately invested companies, again, like we talked about earlier today, is liquidity. It's not a very liquid position, meaning that if you were to sell out of a private company, there has to be another buyer or you're never going to get out. That's how that works. And so kind of kind of wrapping this up in the stock market trading is that I've always been a big advocate is that if you want to get in the stock market and if you want to hold, I'm a big advocate on blue chip dividend yeah. stocks, your Fords, your Toyotas. I mean, things that pay dividends out that are not going to have exponential growth, but it's not like Ford's going to go away next year. Yeah, or Toyota, Chevy, GMC, Daimler, Chrysler, whatever, you know. So if that's kind of your philosophy. Do you have anything to add on on a a holding type of stock? Like, do you, do you do you typically hold on a growth stocks, or do you typically hold on a dividend thing? Yeah, and that's another thing. The companies I looked at as a trader are companies I don't think about now because you know I was really I was doing well in taking advantage of the volatility of tech stocks. And that was big. That that well, that is big. But they're so volatile, and they come and they go so fast. Tech stocks are difficult, man. Yeah, they, they're they're difficult. No. I mean, look at BlackBerry. BlackBerry is dominating the market, and then they just went to shit. Was the same with, you know, like XM, that. XM, XM Radio was massive, and now it's it's yeah. under a dollar per stock. Fitbit, yeah. when I was trading, it was big. It was trading in the 40s, the 50s, and 60s. Now, I, the last time I checked, I think it's trading like $13 a share. And there's, what did, did Apple come in and just destroy them? Well, in that, in that space for that niche, yeah, the Apple, the iWatch, it just killed Fitbit. But now, you know, like you said, is the 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 dividend stocks, the stocks that that will that will pay you over time that aren't going anywhere. And another thing is, when oil's low, you, in my opinion, is you buy oil because it always rebounds. Absolutely, it always one hundred percent with you, bro. And I've told so many guys this that are upset when they have a quarter of their four hundred one k lost money. And if a four hundred one k and most most retirements that you don't you don't pick the funds yourself. They are heavily invested in financials and oil. And well, are you talking just mutuals? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Just the funds that the funds that are used to fund these different retirement accounts. So you know these funds they include a lot of oil and a lot of financials. So if oil's, oil's down, down, your retirement is going to be down, down for a quarter. Don't, don't, don't worry, don't change, change anything. anything. It, it will come, come because, because oil will rebound. rebound. 
and it, it will, will, and it does. It always does. Yeah. I mean, and it's funny because I actually bet against the oil industry with the turret of energy for micro turbines. Okay. I mean, this was, you know, and, and again, the company is Capstone Turbine. Uh, you can definitely take a look at it. Financials are shit, you know, but they were talking about the, the, the turbine vehicles, the turbine alternative generators, the whole nine that can run off of corn, ethanol, gas, diesel, bio waste, etc. They were alternative energy. So I actually bet against fossil fuels. Yeah. Because with regulation, the whole nine yards, even though regulation in the United States, everybody thinks the United States is this big thing. The United States is just a little portion of the world. Yeah. And the world is not leaving fossil fuels anytime soon. Right. Especially with emerging markets. Emerging markets are all about fossil fuel. You'll never beat that. Right. And it's it's going to take it won't be in our lifetimes when oil starts stops being a thing. It, it, it really won't. I and it, I agree with you hundred percent. So I was taking a, a longer term position thinking this company will turn a profit after after shit, I don't know, three to five years. Yeah. Twenty five years later, it hasn't done shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so but it, but again, just to just to kind of solidify your your psychology and methodology of investing absolutely fossil fuels it's a great hedge it definitely is a great hedge yeah so and that's as far as long-term positions go yeah and you know exactly right put that with your put them with your dividend stocks so they'll they'll, they'll drop but they're going to be there especially in retirements i i, I love i love oil in retirement pro in retirements uh, funds, your 401ks, your IRAs, your things like that. Keep oil in there and keep your dividends. And um, really, that's it. Because there's a million ways to invest. There's no perfectly right way. There's no perfectly wrong way. You know, there are people that got rich off of Bitcoin. There are people that got poor off of Bitcoin. I'm not going to talk about that here. But, uh, <laughs> that's a whole no conversation. Yeah, man. exactly. So it's just about what's right for you. But um, I would recommend if you aren't the type of person that likes the emotional strife, because I'm telling you, you'll lose sleep. You'll be eating dinner and you'll be looking at what's happening in after hours trading if you have a big position, especially if you're on margin. And because uh, first time you get your margin call, it, a margin call, it hurts. And um, if you can't deal with that, then it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're you put in, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, you margin fifty percent of that, and then they have their stock calls. So if you hit under a certain percentage, they will sell your entire position. Yeah. And it don't mean I mean that yeah. I have never personally I've never margin traded. I have <laughs> really kind of kicked it around. I'm glad I haven't because I was gonna margin hundred percent on my position, hundred and fifty thousand, mm -hmm. hundred and fifty seven thousand dollar position. I was going to margin 100% on it. Yeah. And I sure as hell glad I didn't because. Smart man. I, I, I would be on the streets right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good call back then on that one because I, I, I have got caught on margin calls, not nearly with that kind of money, but, you know, I could be on a lunch break at work and show my buddy, hey, look how easy this is in and out. And next thing you know, I get margin called and I lose $2,000. So yeah. Know, I mean, I it's. Job. My job at a grocery store, nonetheless, and I just lost two thousand dollars in a half hour. It happens, and, and it does. But yeah. it goes both ways. And so, for the viewers yeah. here, and we've got quite a bit, quite a good viewer retention still. Is that I mean, don't don't get you know, don't get discouraged in stock trading. But I've always been a bit advocate. Is that if you yeah. if you know people, for example, like if Steve. If Steve goes in as a sole proprietor or an LLC, and I don't know what business model you're you're going to do your operations on, um, but I would much rather invest in a person and a person that I know and I trust more than anything else. And like for me, I do what's called venture capital agreements. Mm -hmm. So if I was to go, say, if I was to go on some crazy. I'm I'm gonna make the best rainbow unicorn freaking um uh, uh what what the hell they call the washing things that, that guys use? What what is that called in the shower they use to wash yourself with? Lufa? Lufa. So if I was to create so if I was to go, you know what? I'm gonna start a rainbow unicorn loofah company. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna roll with it, right? So 
if I was to do that, I would crowd, I would, I would crowd invest, you know, go crowdfund, kickstart, whatever to bring money in. I would much rather invest in people that you know, like say if Steve was to start his own franchise um, tax, you know, tax company or uh, his own business and you know him well, I would much rather get into contract meaning that, hey, if I'm going to launch my, if I'm going to launch my unicorn loofah business, I will give everybody their first year a 15% investment return their first year guaranteed mm -hmm. by contract and you can leverage my uh, and you can leverage my business assets if I default. That is always the best way. Yeah. If you are a newer investor, direct investments with other companies is always the best way. Always hands hands down because it's a contract. You're not going to get the three thousand percent AP APY return of some cryptocurrencies that you see all over the news. But if you're getting a guaranteed 15% per year, you're beating the market. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Yeah. You're beating the market. More importantly, you are, um, you're about nine times higher than any savings account rate in the entire world. <laughs> if you can so, get over 2%, tell me the bank. Yeah. Well, you I'll know, put money in it. As you could uh, between, we're up to now. I mean, 2% was the best it's been in years, but then the Fed just cut rates. Yeah, they're going to cut more. So 2% is gone and it's going to be gone for a while. Yeah. You will not see a 2% savings account until something drastically changes again. So it's time for a change in philosophy there. Uh, absolutely. And I, you know what? And, and I, I respect and I honor what you do, Steve. And I really, really hope. And I'm going to shake your hand in person. So I, I hope you're ready for this. So there needs to be a bunch of bicep workouts between both of us because we need to recreate that scene that we did from years ago. Yeah, I did from <laughs> you better get your tan on, bro. Yeah, right. let, let we're gonna to we're gonna definitely meet up. I I would love and again with my next property because I got two more in Colorado. I'd love to have you on board, and I would I would love to build something with you, man. Because honestly, and I don't know if you've experienced the same thing that I have. It's hard to find people with the same mindset anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And, dude, it's hard because I want nothing more. This entire interview was to hopefully get you exposed to more people. And 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 I know that you're like, hey, man, I'm going to go on this guy's channel. And I talk to a lot of people I've never talked to before. Yeah. And so we're going to sit here and, and collaborate and bring our audiences together because at the end of the day, I want people on my channel – or my social media, I want them to make more money and live a better life. Yeah. And that is my job. And I know you're doing the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like I said, I, said, I want, want you to be the best you that you, you can be. be. And, and whatever, whatever, however, however that, that, however that, that happened, happen, that's, that's for everybody. everybody. And that's, 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 that's what, what it's all about. about. Yep. And that, that really is, man. So I appreciate you going over about an hour. That we had. <laughs> but I mean, you know what? Chat's been popping off. We've had a lot of questions. I think that we've addressed quite a bit of questions. Um, there's one last one. So for Michelle King, Richard, and I heard of online banking, and that's some of a higher earnings rate. Yeah. So some of the best rates that I've heard is CD wise. So CDs that I've seen, I've seen 2% two and a quarter percent and it's crazy now again my corporation and this isn't like an advertisement or that bullshit um but i'm not fdic insured i mean i am regulated by the sec in a certain parameter because i'm privately traded so i have to be certified by the state and go through all that bs but if you're gonna if you're gonna put in your money into a CD that's locked for three years. And Stephen, please correct me if I if I misstate anything, because you're you're a better guru than I am on this. So paying for a CD, a certificate of deposit, your money is locked for three years. If you take that money out early, you are penalized. Yes. Meaning that they will take money away from you. That could potentially cost you money. Why would you do that? I mean, again, the only thing I can think of is because FDIC insured for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's typically what banks bank accounts are. Why would you do that when there are companies, big companies, 
you know, Chevy, Ford, Toyota, different dividend paying stocks that will pay you 7% per year on the same money. Yeah. I, I just, I don't understand because you might, and, and again, you might think, well, banks are safer. Well, banks are only safe for FDIC. If there is a federal government shutdown or there's anything that happens, that FDIC doesn't matter anymore. So you could be making two and a half to three times. I mean, hell, if you went to my company, my company could pay you well over two times for the same amount of money. Mm-hmm. And you can get out early. If you're going to Ford at 7%, you can get out early and not be penalized. You can sell that day and be done. Right. Yeah. You know, so banks, and, and don't get me wrong, I support banks, but banks are the biggest scams in, in, in the world, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Just to add a little bit to that real quick, Jake, I know we're wrapping up here. Uh-huh. Uh, Michelle, um, online banking, uh, I think what what maybe Richard was mentioning is nowadays you find the best interest rate returns on these online only savings accounts. Agreed, like um, Capital One and all yeah, that. Absolutely. Places uh-huh. without physical brick and mortar locations, uh-huh. they've really, they really decimated everybody else. A lot of the insurance companies have them too. That's where you'll see some of the best rates. Agreed. Um, but, absolutely. But, yep. Yeah, they kind of came and took this savings the savings accounts uh, away because, you know, a brick and mortar bank, like I don't know about around the country, but around here I use PNC bank and I'm pretty sure their, their best savings account pays out a 0.4% return where you could get two and a half, two percent up until this rate cut at one of these online banks. So Agreed. I believe well, that, over, they have no overhead. Yeah, exactly. There's no overhead. Yeah. And then you make a fancy app, you brand it towards millennials who like do everything on a phone and you have a good product there. And that's really how those work. But also one thing, and that'll be it for me. I'll keep my mouth shut until we can wrap this up. But um, (laughs) um, there is an app there and I'm not going to, I'm not going to share my referral code called. No, you're fine. If you got a referral code, bro, throw that down there. (laughs) But Uh, um, This is about supporting you. If you've got a referral code for some of these guys. Throw it, man. I'm only bringing this up because I, I put it in a video I recorded today about what I was saying about um, the Fed raising rates and inflation um, called Acorns. And what Acorns yep. is, you can invest in straight to it. And it's a savings account, but it's not a savings account. It is backed by stock market investments. So in a situation that we're at where inflation is so low and savings accounts um, rates are going to be lowered by the Federal Reserve lowering the rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Getting into something like acorns could be something that's really cool. You can pick your degree of risk. You can see where what what ETFs your money's invested in, and that's something I would recommend if you're looking. Acorns is a great app. Yeah, a- acorns is a great. So throw throw your link down there, man. That you copy and paste that shit down there. Uh, <laughs> because really I, no, seriously, it. man, do it, do All it. Right, because okay. hopefully this will get some more hits. Yeah. Um, but Acorns is a great app because not only can you set, for example, you go to Starbucks, you spend four dollars and eighty five cents on a mocha. You can actually program Acorns to put that additional fifteen cents into an ETF for you. Yeah. So it's actual, completely passive and residual investing, and it rounds everything up for you. Yeah. And then, like Stephen said, you can you can manage your degree of risk throughout it. Yeah. So if you want a conservative investments that pays more than what the market rate is for CDs or savings or whichever, yeah, Acorns is a great app. Michelle, if, you, if you're looking at it, go go to Steven's affiliate link because not only that, it also credits him for him producing the information and being here and, and bringing that out. But it's a great application. It really, really is. Yeah. And so if you're not familiar with it, go to it, take a look. It's seamless. It links to all your accounts, links to all your, your uh, not only uh, uh, all your mobile devices, your tablets, phones, computers, whatever, but it's a great thing. And it, it it's not a forced investment, but it just rounds everything up to the nearest dollar. And a lot yeah. of people don't know that's thousands of dollars a year. Yeah, Absolutely. And, you know, this, the best thing about Acorns, Michelle, especially reading with kind of what you're, I'll send, I'll uh, post the link here in a second. But I think with what you've been talking about is you want something a little bit more aggressive than a typical savings account without like, you know, the whole, with, with liquidity, without the hardcore extent of day trading. So I would say, you know, get yourself into some dividend stocks 
and really think about an app like Acorn, which is perfect. Fees are super low. I've used it forever, and you, you, you could use the roundups that um, Jacob was saying. They have all kinds of like found money things, but you could also use it just as a savings account. That's how I handled it. I turned off the um, roundups a long time ago. It got too confusing to see all these different changes happening in my bank account. I'm an accountant. I don't like numbers changing. I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> this is well, the cool thing is with Acorns, too, is that they also have affiliate offers. And yeah. so, for example, if they're looking for cable TV or internet providers or phone providers uh, or different, you know, buying stuff for Disneyland or shoes or whatever. If you have the Acorn apps and you go to Payless or or whatever, and if you make a purchase, they will actually give you a certain percentage to five, 10 percent towards your Acorn balance which they're giving you money. It's it's really a lot like a 401k if you really think about it. Yeah. To where they're doing matching or above above matching and putting it into your investment account. And and it, correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen, um, but Acorns, I believe you can withdraw at any time. Is that, is that still the... Um, yeah, you can withdraw at any time. And then um, I think for the settlement too, it takes about three days. Because there have been there were a couple times over the years where I decided, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna go put this money elsewhere and I'd pull uh -huh. out of and stick it somewhere else. But then I'd always come back. So um, yeah, it is super it's super easy. It's a way for everybody to get into the stock market without thinking about it. And um, you know, a lot and of And ETFs are awesome. If yeah. you go for a conservative ETS and Michelle King, I, I know her, she's a little bit younger. So you're gonna definitely wanna go to the moderate aggressive type of ETFs. Uh, because of your age, you always want to kind of monitor your risk tolerance with your age, because if there is a lot of risk and things kind of get battered, you can deal with it a lot better when you're younger compared to when you're older, because you need the funds available more immediately. Yeah. So a moderate to aggressive investment with Michelle, because she's under 30, would definitely be a way to go. But the Acorn apps is is really, really a good app. Definitely use his affiliate link. Put as much money in as you can. I know with Richard and everything, there they he should also have retirement benefits there. But rounding things up to the nearest dollar is is stupid simple. And it, it's a it's a four savings. And I use my insurance policies as the first savings because my insurance policies have a 25 year old or 25 year payout. So every dime I put in my insurance policies. I'm going to be getting almost $240,000 back at the end of my term. If I use them or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That money's coming back. So that's a four savings. That's another couple of houses for me. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, and not just that, but I'm covered. So I don't have to worry about losing anything, which is awesome. So on that, Stephen, do you have anything else to, to, to offer? Or, I mean, we're, we're well over, I mean, we're about <laughs> twice what we wanted to be. So you know some we, great content, some great, some great conversation. It, you know, we both missed a meal. So the gains are going to be suffering today, but we did it for you. For you guys <laughs> and, um, we lost muscle for you viewers. Yeah, right now. Because damn it, hashtag Steve cares, and hashtag Jacob cares for you and um, <laughs> anybody who's still watching that came here to see me um look, you've seen the guy he's hilarious he knows what he's talking about like his knowledge is out of this world and i'm i'm glad to call him a friend so give, give jacob's page a subscription Check Thank you, man. Content. and um yeah I, I appreciate you being here to watch us for two hours and five minutes hey, we, we still have 11 people on the stream right now Which so crazy. They're, they're Wesley, see you in hell. I'll see you in hell, bud. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I'm thinking, man, is I'm thinking that once we get done with Nebraska, we'll be in Colorado later this week. I want a workout video with you. I want to see what you do for your arms, man. I want to see I want to see the real deal in action. And I, I want to get a workout video while talking about finance. So <laughs> I always see like compound interest with drop sets, bro. That's what yeah. That's you see, try, try that one. <laughs> Shelly says subscribe. Thank you, Shelly. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we really appreciate. Uh, he fights Grizz. That's funny because I'm called Grizzly Adams, so I hope that's not like a. <laughs> I hope that's not a. Uh -huh. There's not like a double term there, but. Hey, man, I really appreciate it. Um, I would love to do whatever work I can do for you on your channel. You're kicking ass. You're doing a great job. So let me know whatever I can do. 
Um, and then we'll kind of work off each other. And it's all about us creating a better life for each other and for other people. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah, so definitely let me know, bro. I love it. I'd like to get something with you on, um, you know, I told you, I have people asking me about the, the concept of flipping houses and, sure. uh, yeah. and that's something I'd love to bring you on for because that's, you know, I don't know everything, but I know somebody who knows about what I need to know about. So let's bring them on. Hi from Chester. Hey, Chester. What's up, bud? Hey, Chester. Well, I think I, I said hi wrong. Here you go. Oi, there I like that. Nice. Hey, ho, <laughs> ho. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm thinking so. So what I'm thinking is that because in, in, in lifting weights, I, I, not to sound like a know-it-all me head, mm -hmm. but we have something called like reverse pyramids and so on and so forth. So we can explain compound interest on like a reverse pyramid or progressive yeah. pyramid like leg press. It could, and be, so, it could be interesting, man. Uh, that would actually be kind of funny because yeah. if you're going at it, we can do like a compound interest rate to say the market, which is 12%. And add that to every set during a leg press until one of us can't do it. <laughs> that would be pretty funny, man. You know, I don't know if anybody's not, done that. Not trying to brag, but it would take us a while to find that weight. The, adding 12 pounds at a time before you and I both couldn't do it. So we might, we might have like a three hour. Well, I mean, if we there. started a thousand pounds, I mean, if we, we would. Speed it's it worth up. Doing. You know, Talk about a niche and a niche and a niche. That's how you take over the world, man. I, you know what? I, I think compound interest leg press. I, I think that's a thing. That should be a tag. It, it's it, If it's not a thing yet, we will make it a thing. <laughs> we hey, where, where do you say you're are, – are you on the East Coast? You're East Coast, aren't you? Yeah, I live about 45 minutes north of Pittsburgh. Oh shit! I was just out in Pittsburgh a couple a couple months ago, so okay, okay. I think uh, I think that's going to be a thing. I, I think uh, – I think I'm going to go to Pittsburgh here in a couple of months, man. I, th I think we're going to make this happen. Yeah, give me a couple of months. Let me get in shape because I'm walking around. <laughs> get around. Get the hell out of here, I'm man. I'm walking around get, about get 18, get in shape. 18, get 19 percent body fat right now. I'm way too soft for that. <laughs> so, yeah, let me get right first and let's make that happen. Damn it. Sounds good, brother. All right, man. Well, I appreciate stealing two hours of your time, man. Thank yeah, you for yeah. stopping by. I love it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody that came in to watch. Michelle, enjoy your dinner. Um, Chips Ahoy is a five pass of Pirates' favorite cookie. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Jacob, I appreciate you, man. Hey, man. Congrats. No problem. I'll have a I'll have a better studio once I'm out of this investment property. I got I got a studio in Colorado. This is this is just some amateur shit, but uh, you gotta do what you can on the road, brother. Yeah. Hey, I hey Mike, thank you, man. Thank you for being here. Anyways, it, I mean any constru uh, uh, constructive criticism, everything's open. You're not gonna hurt our feelings. Let us know how we both can do better. Both and again, we're here for you. We're here to serve you the best that we can. There, there's Henry or Hank. <laughs> there's Hank killing it. So there, there's our outro right there. Yeah. So, Thanks, Hank. All right, man. Have a good night, brother. Thank you. Hey, I'll see you, Jacob. Thank you, man. All right.